This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this uh, mobile notification graphic using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and I'll get started here in Inkscape and by the way if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons here a link to that in, uh, information will be in the description of the video. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make sure the view is set to custom. And then we're going to zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up our line and distribute menu. And then we'll open up the fill in stroke menu as well. And up here in this toolbar, you want to make sure you have this, this uh, box turned off that says effect. This box to the very far left, I currently have it turned on. Let's just click on that to make sure it's turned off for the duration of this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is create the actual shape of the phone here. We're going to create the actual phone and we're going to start out with the rectangle. So let's grab the squares and rectangles tool and click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle that's about the, uh, the width and height of a phone. Maybe like that, that's pretty good. And then we want to go and give this thing rounded corners. So just grab that little top note up there and pull that down to give that rounded corners. And we're going to give this an outline like you see here, we're going to make it white and give it like a, a, a dark blue outline. So we'll make it white. We'll come down here to the color picker. We'll find a shade of blue we want to use as the outline. And once you find the shade you want to use, just hold shift on the keyboard and click on the color. And that'll define it as the outline color. And then we'll come over to the stroke style uh, tab here. And we just want to give this a size. Uh, I'm going to go with six. Yeah, I'll use uh, six. That looks pretty good. And whatever, whatever size you use, Try to remember that because that's the size we're going to use for every other shape that we create for this graphic. So uh, I, I use six here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the select tool and I'm going to duplicate this object by going to edit, duplicate, and uh, I'll go back to the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click this button up here to make the corner sharp. And let's go back to the select tool. I'm going to take this top arrow and bring this down to about here. Take this bottom arrow and bring that up to about there. And as you can see, we're starting to take the shape of the phone here with this square being the, uh, the uh, screen of the phone. So the next step is to put a little uh, circle and speaker slot up there. So uh, let's grab the circles and ellipses tool. Hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a little circle like that. I'll go to the Select tool and I'll put this about right here. And then I'll hold shift and click on the rectangle and then uh, click on center on vertical axis and then click off of that to deselect everything. So now I'm going to put the little speaker slots up here. So let me zoom in on that a little bit. I'm going to press plus in the keyboard a few times. And you can move the page around by holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And I'll grab the Bezier pen which is right here or you could press B on the keyboard to grab that. And I'll go up here and I'll click and then hold control and bring this over to the right click and let go of control and just press enter on the keyboard to create the line. And we want to make that a six point stroke similar to what the other shapes are. And we want to give this a rounded cap, which is right here, rounded cap. And we'll make this the same shade that this blue is. So let's go to this, the, uh, the dropper tool, which is down here, or you could just press F7 on the keyboard and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the blue area to make that the same shade. And we'll go back to the select tool. I'll right click that and go to duplicate and then hold control and just click and drag this off to the right. And we'll go to the uh, edit paths by nodes tool and I'll grab this node right here. I'll hold control and then click and drag this node to the right about that far. And then we go back to the select tool, hold control, just move this over a little bit and then hold shift and click on the other line so we have them both selected and we'll group them together and then hold shift and click on the uh, rectangle and center it on the vertical axis. Now we can click off it to deselect everything and I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. So we have our phone. The next thing we want to create is the, uh, the fingers holding the phone right there. So um, to do that, let's come over here off to the side. We'll grab this uh, squares and rectangles tool and just click and drag to create a big rectangle like that. And I'm going to take this top node up here and I'm going to bring this all the way to the left. If it doesn't let you do that, if it starts you out with sharp corners like this, take this node down here and bring that down a little bit. And then this other node will appear. And then you can take this one and bring that all the way over like that. 
Bring that down a little bit. And uh, let's duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And that'll make another copy. And then I want to take that copy. I'm going to grab this note and bring that all the way down like that. And I'll bring this all the way back. Actually, no, I'll leave this right about here. And then I'll grab the uh, Select tool. And I'm just going to hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this down about that much until it's lined up like that. Let me zoom in on that to show you. If you don't bring it down far enough, you kind of got like this little tip sticking out right here. But if you bring it down far enough, it'll it'll sit flush against the other shape. So that's pretty good like that. And then I'll click and drag over both of those. And I'll unify them together by going to Path, Union. And we now have the shape for one of the fingers. So let's click on this a second time to get the rotation handles. And hold Control on the keyboard and just rotate this around until it's sitting horizontally like that. And then we'll bring this over here. Let me click on it again to get back to the scaling handles. And I'll hold Control and scale this down like that. And again, going back to what I said earlier, we want to make sure we have this turned off. Because if we have this turned on, we'll hold Control and it won't change. It will change the shape of the stroke. We want the size of the stroke to stay the same the whole time. That's what turning this off does. So let me scale that down again. And I'll put this right here. And you know what? Um, for now, I'm going to have to actually, let's make this red and bring the opacity down in half. And let's get rid of that stroke for now. So let's come back down here to the color picker all the way to the X. Hold Shift, click on the X. And then I'm going to duplicate this graphic right here, this little red shape. I'm going to hit Control D, and then hold Control and move it down to here. And then hold Shift and click on the other red shape. And click on the button that says uh, Align Top Edges of Objects to the Bottom Edge of the Anchor. And that should stack it up neatly against it. And then I'll just duplicate both of these by hitting Control D and hold Control, move them down to here. And I'll group them together. And then hold Shift and click on this red shape and press the button that says Align Top Edges of Objects to the Bottom Edge of the Anchor. And these should all be stacked on top of each other nicely. And then we can click and drag over all four of those red shapes. We can ungroup them. And then we can bring the opacity up, make them white, and then give them the blue stroke that this has. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. Pressing plus on the keyboard to zoom in. And I'll press F7 to get the dropper tool and hold shift and click on the color blue to put that stroke back on there. And we just wanna come over here just to make sure we have it set at six, which it is, so that's good. Go back to the select tool. Uh, let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Maybe I'll make these a little smaller. That's pretty good, I'll put them right about there like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate these four objects. I'm going to hit Control D and I'm going to unify them together by going to Path, Union. And what I'm doing now is I'm creating kind of like, a, I guess you can call them like the fingernails on the edge of each finger right there. So once we've done that, let's hold Control and move this off to the left a little bit. And then let's grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and we're going to draw a shape. We're going to draw a rectangle going through the center of each tip of the finger. So uh, let's make the corner sharp there. Go back to the Select tool. And for this, we're going to want to get rid of that stroke. So we'll hold Shift and click on the X. And again, we'll make this red, bring the opacity down in half. Go back to the Select tool. And I'm going to want to zoom in on this while doing this. So just press plus in the keyboard a couple of times. And... Uh, Put this right about here, maybe make that a little longer. Then I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D and then hold Control and just click and drag this down to this finger. And hold Shift and click on this other shape and then hit Control D and then hold Control and just move these down to here. And that's pretty good like that. And then we could hold Shift and click on the other two so we have all four of the red shapes selected. We'll make sure they're spaced out evenly by clicking the button that says Make Vertical Gaps Between Objects Equal. Unify them together by going to Path, Union, and then hold Shift and click on this shape right here and make sure it's centered on the horizontal axis. And then we're going to hold Control and just move these off to the left so it's not interfering with this over here. And what we want to do now is with both of these selected, we'll go to Path, Cut Path. And it doesn't look like much happened, but it did. It gave us a bunch of individual little shapes to work with. So let's take this and press delete to get rid of that. And let's take this little intersecting area right here, press delete to get rid of that. And the same thing with these two down here, just get rid of those. And then we can click on these and then hold control and just click and drag these off to the right 
to put them where they ought to be. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Click off it to deselect. Um, okay, so that's pretty good now. Just one minor change we have to make to this. If you notice, I have the fingers at different lengths here, uh, as they should be. So let's take care of that. I'm going to zoom back in, press plus a few times. I'm going to click on this shape and then hold shift and click on that shape so we have them both selected and go to the edit paths by nodes tool and click and drag over both of those not both of those this whole section up here and then hold control and just click and drag these off to the right like that and again I'll click on this shape and then hold shift and click on that shape and click and drag over that whole right side of nodes right there and hold control and move these to the right as well but not quite as far as the other ones Right about there is good. And we could take this one, click on that, then hold shift, click on that, click and drag over these, hold control and move these to the left a little bit because that's the uh, smallest finger right there. And then we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and you'll see uh, it's looking pretty good. So we'll go back to the select tool, click off of it to deselect. Uh, the next step is um, we're gonna draw the hand here, the hand and the thumb, which is a little tricky, but uh, let's get started on that. We'll grab the squares and rectangles tool to do that. And I'm going to click and drag and create the shape right here. I'm going to create a rectangle about that size, right about there. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this up. I'll make this white and I'll give this a stroke, which is the same shade of blue as this. So let me zoom in on this. Press F7 to grab the dropper. Hold Shift and click on that color blue to give that an outline like that. Let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. Go back to the Select tool and I'm going to send this to the bottom lower selection to the bottom and uh, let's go to the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to grab this node and I'm going to give this a rounded corners rounded corners like that that's pretty good and then we'll convert that to a path by going to path object to path and then we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool click on that and we're going to turn on this button up here that says show transformation handles for selected nodes we'll turn that on and then click and drag over these far left side nodes over here, these four nodes. And when you do that, you'll now have these transformation handles. So you can hold control and just grab this left handle and pull that up like that. Maybe about that much. That's pretty good. I'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to hold control, move this up a little bit, move it to the left, move it in like that. So we have the base of the hand there now. We have to create the thumb. So. Let's go back to the squares and rectangles tool and we'll create a thumb a shape like that. That's pretty good. We'll go to the select tool, send that to the bottom. And I'm going to hold control and just move this up to the right a little bit. I'm actually going to move this out a little bit as well. Maybe I'll, I'll actually make this a little smaller. This is something you'll have to play around with a little bit just to make sure you have it right. And that's pretty good. And then hold shift with this object selected, hold shift and click on the thumb. With them both selected, we'll go to path union. So we have the hand and the thumb here, but the problem we have here now is it's kind of like a short, a sharp corner, which doesn't look right. I have it rounded here in this thumbnail uh, graphic. So let's zoom in on this a little bit. Oops, zoom in. We'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool and then click on this node right here and just delete that. Press delete on the keyboard. And then we'll take this handle right here and pull that up so it's running parallel with the other handle running next to it. And once you have it somewhat parallel, you could hold control and click on that node and it'll set it to be parallel like that. And we'll do the same thing up here. Let's click on this node. Uh, let me zoom in a little more. Take this handle, hold control so it goes straight down like that. And then hold control and click on that node to lock in the uh, symmetrical uh, handles there. So uh, let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and go to the select tool. That's pretty good. We're getting closer. Um, what's next? All right. So we'll create the wrist and there's a little bit of like a, like, I guess a sleeve or a collar, I guess. So let's uh, grab the rectangles tool and click and drag to create another rectangle right about here. We're going to give this one sharp corners. Go to the select tool, send that to the bottom. Put that right about there. And then we'll right, we'll uh, actually, we'll just duplicate that by hitting control D and then hold control and move this off to the right. And hold control and just click and drag this right arrow back a little bit just to scale this up to make it a little bigger. 
put this over here like that. All right, it's looking pretty good. So we'll take this object up here, the speaker, and we'll just use that as the line that I put here. So let's uh, hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate that and put that over here. Oops, forgot to duplicate that. There we go. And then we'll rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise with this button up here and put this right about right up in the corner there and then click on that hold control and just grab that arrow and scale it up a little bit and then we get hold control and click on the uh, rectangle beneath it and make sure it's centered on the horizontal axis and then click off it to deselect all right so what do we have next the next step we're going to create these little lines here on the side which uh, shouldn't be too difficult let's take this line right here hit control D to duplicate that again and hold control and just scale this up like that and let's ungroup that now click off it to deselect and hold control and just move this in a little bit to the left and then hold shift and click on that and hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate that and put this down here click off it to deselect take this one hit control D to duplicate it and then hold control and move this to the right then I'll hit, um, I'll go to the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool and grab this node and hold Control and just move that in about that much. And same thing with this, this one over here. Let's click on that one, hold Control, move that node in a little bit like that. We'll go back to the Select tool. Let's click and drag over those three lines and group them together. And then click and drag over those two lines and group them together. And just put this over here. And we'll duplicate this by hitting Control D. And we'll flip that horizontally and hold control and bring this down to about here. Now we can click and drag over those three sets of lines and we can just make sure they're spaced out evenly by hit, uh, pressing make horizontal gaps between objects equal. And we will center them on the vertical axis and then hit um, the group key, the group button. Group selected objects. I'll just put this down there like that. Let me see. Uh, maybe I'll make these, um, maybe I'll bring them in a little bit like that. That's pretty good. Then I'll hit Control D to duplicate that again and hold Control and just bring this off to the right over here. And that's looking pretty good. The final step now is to create our little notification icon in there, which should be pretty easy. We'll just go to the um, Squares and Rectangles tool, and hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. We'll go to the Select tool. Um, we'll make this red. We'll get rid of the outline by holding Shift and clicking on the X. And we'll go to the um, the uh, we'll go back to the squares and rectangles tool and grab this node to give this rounded corners like that. And we'll go back to the select tool, and we'll duplicate this by hitting Control D, and then bring this over here. Click on it a second time to get the rotation handles, and hold Control and rotate it around until the corners are going vertically and horizontally like that. Let me go ahead and put this on top of the other rectangle. Let's hold Control and scale that down put this right about there maybe I'll bring in the width of this a little bit like that that's pretty good and then hold shift and click on the other rectangle and just make sure it's centered on the vertical axis click off it to deselect and now we can just create some text there I'm just gonna grab the text tool and I'm gonna write a number six we'll go to the text editor the font I'll use for this is Leto click apply close out of that go back to the select tool hold shift and click on this red uh, rectangle center it on the vertical and horizontal axis click off of it to deselect and then click on just the number and turn that white maybe make that a little bigger and let me see if uh, I'm forgetting anything did I cover everything yeah it looks like I covered everything so that's that's pretty much it that's how you can create this object using Inkscape and by the way if you'd like to make this a little smaller you could just uh, click and drag over all of it if you want to make the lines thicker, I mean, you could hold Control and Shift and scale it down, and it'll make all of the lines a little thicker because we're keeping it at a, at, at a stroke size of 6. Maybe a little more. And once you get it down to a thickness you like, you can go ahead and turn this back on. And then you can be able to scale it down and up without any change in the, of the, uh, in the proportions of the graphic. So... That's how you can create that graphic using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.